Good morning ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking, the great man here today with another video. Today's video will be a little bit of a different video. Today I'm going to be doing a little bit of a rant on the iPhone 7 rumor announcement. So I have this article open up here about the iPhone 7 and it says here the iPhone 7 is undoubtedly one of the most hotly anticipated gadgets of the year. After last year's iPhone 6s upgrade, tick fans are eager to see what the world's most valuable company has planned for 2016. Even though the official announcement is months away, there are a host of rumors already circulating online. Now, taking a look here, what it says about the iPhone 7 is it will have a whopping 256 gigabytes of storage. So I'm just adding to the hype over here. That's double the storage of an entry-level MacBook Air. So that's pretty amazing. It is a SanDisk NAND flash memory chip that could be appropriate for the next generation smartphone. The release date. It's likely that we see the iPhone 7 officially revealed in September of 2016, so September of this year. Both the iPhone 6s and the iPhone 6 were revealed in September and Apple has no reason to change its strategy, so every year there will be something introduced in September. The model may drop the iconic home button on the front of the gadget. So listen to that, there might not be any more home button on the front of the gadget. So basically, there might be... Um, like an edge to it, kind of like the Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge or the LG G Flex 2. There might be like a little bit of an edge where there's all the home buttons and stuff like that, but that is yet to be decided. Now it will have all the buttons on the side, like the volume and the power button and the silence button and stuff like that, just like an Android phone. Fans have been infuriated by new witch claim to show a drastic change in one of the key features of the iPhone, dropping the headphone socket. So they got pictures here of an iPhone 6 or iPhone 7 case sort of thing and it looks like there's no headphone socket and these cases are being released before the iPhone 7 actually comes out. I also have another picture here that shows absolutely no evidence of a headphone jack. It currently looks like it's about three millimeters in size maybe two millimeters a little bit less than that uh, the thin how thin it is. The iPhone 7 will have a 12 megapixel camera it have the, it'll have the power button the volume button on the same side and it'll also have a flash. It may have touch ID as once again the home button is just a a rumor going around that there might not be one. Now this smartphone may feature a dual lens camera. So that should be pretty interesting. Oh here's another something really cool. It has it is waterproof, so the iPhone will be waterproofed. It'll be allowed you can be taken down into as far down as you want. Full water resistance. Now your iPhone can swim, but it doesn't matter if you can't. <laughs> it kinda does. Uh, eye diver new software for diving and underwater shooting so you can take pictures underwater now now I'd like to oppose that topic as it has one of those sensitive screens now the way the sensitive screen on top of an iPhone or a smartphone works is basically your finger has a static charge now the phone has like a, a electricity sensor on top of the screen. Whenever you touch the phone, you cr you create like a small electric charge from your finger to the phone, because the screen is uh, electricity like a uh, current sensitive. So whenever you touch it, the sensors go off, and the processor detects it, and um, decides what to do with that fingered print. It says here that it is going to be constructed by liquid metal. The iPhone 7 could be completely waterproof. According to a report in the China-based Commercial Times, Apple is working on a new compound material that repels water for use in its forthcoming smartphone. This ma new material will also reportedly remove the need of, for the two plastic strips that run across the back of the current generation of iPhones to allow mobile signals to reach the antennas. So now you can e maybe you can even text under water. That's pretty interesting. But once again, the only problem is the touch-sensitive screen because when you get water on that screen your electric charge in your finger will not be as accurate and trust me I've experienced it myself there's also been some suggestion that the iPhone 7 can include a cutting-edge technology known as Li-Fi that is capable of transmitting at over at 100 times the speed of Wi-Fi however this is unlikely given that Li-Fi is still in the early stages of development and researchers don't expect it to be ready for commercial use before the end of the decade now, Li-Fi, I have no idea what, it, what that is. I'll do a really quick search here. Li-Fi is the use of visible light portion of the electromagnetic spectrum to transmit information at very high speeds. This is in contrast to established forms of wireless communication, such as Wi-Fi, which uses traditional radio frequency signals to transmit data. So basically, 
late fidelity is bi-directional high speed and fully network wireless communication technology similar to Wi-Fi it basically uses the light in the home to transmit data and your phone your iPhone 7 is supposed to pick that up somehow quote unquote how does it work once again we have the uh, same description which is basically telling us that Li-Fi is a visible light communication system running wireless communications traveling at very high speeds. It could have a speed up of up to 224 gigabits per second. Now I'm running Bell Canada here in Stony Creek and I'm getting 5 megabits per second. Now imagine 224 gigabits per second. I could probably download the whole operating system in two seconds. Maybe one, maybe less. Li-Fi and Wi-Fi are quite similar as both transmit data electromagnetically. However, Wi-Fi uses radio waves while Li-Fi runs on visible light. Now the problem with visible light is what if you don't have any? If you're in a dark room, you might have need to have like an ultraviolet light or some kind of light that runs out of the spectrum, spectrum of vision. So, as we know, Li-Fi is a visible light communication VLC system. This means that it accommodates a phone detector photo detector to receive light signals and a signal processing element to convert the data into streamable content like YouTube now it's basically like a binary signal kind of thing as it says here an LED light bulb is a semiconductor light source meaning that the constant current of electricity supplied to an LED light bulb can be dipped and dimmed up and down at extremely high speeds without being visible to the human eye so imagine binary code is basically one and zero. One is signal on and zero is signal off. And this is the main code of the computer. That's how everything inside of it works. The processor, all the logic inside of the computer. That's how it works with the binaries. Now what this is implying is that you take an ordinary LED light bulb and you flash it multiple times. And this kind of data can be detected by a sensor like a photo sensor and transmitted into legitimate streamable content where you can watch the video you're downloading or something like that. Now here's the problem. Li-Fi signals cannot pass through walls. So in order to enjoy full connectivity, capable LED, LED bulbs will need to be replaced throughout the home. Not to mention Li-Fi requires the light bulb is on at all times to provide connectivity, meaning that the lights will need to be on during the day. Where there is a lack of light bulbs, there is a lack of Li-Fi internet. So Li-Fi does take a hit when it comes to public Wi-Fi network. Now, as announced yesterday, apparently, Wi-Fi is coming and it's called Wi-Fi Hello, so it's like a an extension. This new project plans to double the range of connectivity while using less power due to the Wi-Fi Hello is report reportedly perfect for battery powered devices such as smartwatches, smartphones, and lends itself to the Internet of Things devices such as sensors and smart applications. So let's take a look at the overview. So we have this new technology coming out that's called Li-Fi. What it does is going to be it's going to be implemented in the iPhone 7. Now this way it works is you take an LED light bulb and you flash it multiple times. The iPhone 7 picks it up and you get a data transfer. Now the main issue of this is the light bulb has to stay on and wherever there is no light bulb there is no connectivity. Now I could have a possible solution to this. You could create a ultraviolet light or some kind of a light that's outside of the visible spectrum that the iPhone sensor can detect like an infrared you can always use infrared and it would be less power less uh, power consuming now we have this new project called Wi-Fi hollow which I just learned of today which is a plan to minimize power usage while connected to Wi-Fi now power usage for me isn't in Wi-Fi isn't that big of a, a deal but for some people it can be now basically Li-Fi is going to be implemented into everyday products as it says here in November last year Li-Fi pioneers Pure Li-Fi joined forces with French lightning company Lucibel aiming to bring out Li-Fi enables products later this year. So basically they're going to be releasing LED light bulbs capable of transmitting this data between the iPhone 7 and the internet. Now something that one I wonder about is how do you connect that LED light bulb to the internet? That's something that they not ex explain. I'm guessing they had have some kind of antenna to it or a mini router or some sort. But um, that is yet to be revealed. I will have a link to these articles in the description below if you wish to take a read of them. Thank you for watching another video. I know we got a kind of off topic from the iPhone 7 to Li-Fi. But I bet you guys did not know what Li-Fi is. And I didn't either. Thank you for watching. Have a good one.